just bringing my car up the ski hill here to see if I can get the long range fuel trim to sort out and it did. It was stuck at 25 forever and then now it's down to zero. The short range is up though, which is weird. Just sitting here at idle. Um, so it's looking okay. This is after I put the test pipe in and the extension on the secondary O2 sensor, which is is an O2 sensor with the uh, voltage. Uh, it's right here. So track the ant. You see, it's fairly steady now. This is in a small window. There, yeah, so it's fairly steady. Whereas before I had that buffer in the O2 sensor, the extension, it was uh, just jumping up and down, just like the like a uh, upstream sensor would do. So that's the downstream sensor, it's fairly steady now. So that that's helped a lot, I think. And now the long terms down to zero, maps okay. It Sometimes it's three, sometimes it's four. It's kind of weird that way. And then uh, the, uh, it's actually a air fuel ratio sensor in the upstream O2 sensors position. It says O2 sensor one, bank one, but it's actually an air fuel uh, ratio sensor. That's why it's in milliamps. So and right now that's really lean, so, or sorry, rich. So that's good. So hopefully we'll keep, keep leaning this thing out. Um, it just, when it's at 25% long term, it just stumbles and runs terribly. It's just super rich and it reeks like gas, it stinks up your garage. You know, you know it's rich. It's just throwing the fuel out there. So it's running a lot better now. So I'll keep going up the ski hill here and see if, uh, if things turn out a bit better. Follow these guys on up the hill. This climb and climbing is about a 3,000 foot climb, so it seems to help. But on the way out here, I set the cruise control and uh, there's the scenery. I set the cruise control and that's when it sorted out. Sitting there idling in my driveway, it wouldn't kind of correct at all, but I just had the cruise on for 10, 15 minutes and then all of a sudden this long term just went right down and sorted out. See how long term's gone negative, which is the first time I've ever seen that. So for your Audi, make sure you buy one that has a heads up display of your long term fuel trim because it's an Audi and you're going to need it. Okay. Yeah, so as I was driving, I was, must have been learning. So I did pop up a few codes uh, System 2 Lean, O2 sensor circuit, not, no activity detected, Bank 1 sensor 2, so that's the one with the buffer in it, uh, O2 sensor heater circuit. Bank one sensor, so uh, that's not good. Can't really explain that because they seem to be working. Oh, and cylinder four misfire. I always get that. I don't understand it. No oh, evap system per, per control valve circuit open. Post catalytic fuel trim to lean. Yeah, it kind of makes sense. So it thinks it's lean, so it's trying to throw fuel at it. System too lean, okay, going over again. So I'll have to go through all those again, but uh, hopefully I can figure them out. And uh, seems to be more than one problem, but maybe it just is one problem. Another weird thing is, um, let me just see if we can get back to that. Oh, I guess I can erase all codes. So when I erase all codes, it's going to reset all the, the fuel trims. So yeah, I don't really want to erase it. I'm finally freaking getting this stupid thing learned, so no. I'll come back to them later. And then for live data. Okay, so yeah, this is kind of my short range. So my short range is at 18, which is high. I'm just going to pump the brake pedal and see what happens. So just one press down. It goes up a little bit. I'll press it a lot. And that's what I find when I press the brake pedal a lot, I will be able to get the short term to go up, as in going lean. So it wants to add fuel. So and I just hold it here and it starts to go down, and then I release the brake pedal now. 
Oh, went back up a little tiny bit. Uh, now it's kind of sorting itself out again. So I have to check that too. I might have a brake booster issue or seal issue in there somewhere. But again, the car has a ton of vacuum. And it runs great. So I don't know what the hell. It's very sensitive, this system. So it's kind of coming back a little bit and then down to 16. Oh, no, up to 20. It'll bounce around. It's always whatever it is. But thank God, long term zero. I'm just going to shut it off and restart it and see what happens here. Might lose the connection to the. It's going to go to the reader here. That seems to be okay. Well, I'll get to the top of the hill and I'll reset the whole freaking thing and see what's going on. Yeah, up here at the ski hill, sun peaks. So good elevation change, and then it's still doing okay. Uh, let's see here, I should park somewhere else or something bright. So yeah, short range is 16, long term, long range is zero, or long term zero. And then those other codes, I just remember I had them unplugged. I was when I was for this leak, I unplugged the evap and unplugged the O2 sensors and stuff like that. So. I was going and I'll race those and see what happens. Put that there. Okay. Get out of the nice codes. Yes. Now the car murmured a little tiny bit, but not that much, which is good. Before when I raced codes, it would just uh, not stall, but not do very well. So let's the pause here while this loads up. Okay, just go complete this. Okay, so this is after the reset, and we should be back. Set. Oh, that's good. So long term still zero, which is good. Short term is negative, which is good. Now what else we got? This thing. Thirty-two IAT maps, about three. It's kind of normal. Up pretty high here, so it's understandable. It's down a little tiny bit. Uh, O2 sensor two is uh, nice and steady, so that's good. Let's rev it a bit, make it jump. But it's good that it's sent uh, steady now. Uh, what else is there? Parametrics 87 kPa, so I'll have to check it out and see what that is in PSI. Uh, yes, yeah, so sensor one still a touch negative. No, there's positive, so just balancing out, so that's good. Cat temp 674 Celsius. So the trims are at zero. Yeah, so long range, short range looking good. So before you freak out after you do your downpipe, make sure you take it for a long drive. Let the the ECM just kind of go through all the calculations at a few speeds, steady speeds. Just give it a chance. Instead of going out and just flooring it all the time and see how much boost you can get out of it. This thing's getting about 12 to 13 PSI boost. And that stock with just the uh, catalytic converter removed, that's it. And that's at 233k. So it's not exactly a tight engine, it's a newer engine would have more boost. And uh, it's not a new car, I'm just learning this stuff for the first time. I'm sure that. VW techs and Audi techs and all this stuff have long since retired, but it's a new problem to me and it's kind of, I hope this uh, information here helps when you're troubleshooting, just get some idea of the values I have. It's running okay when you floor it, it goes, like there's no problem there, it always starts, it hasn't stalled or anything like that. So 
Hope this helps you out. Okay, bye-bye.